Whether you're interested in the underlying technology, the privacy element, or are simply chasing better returns than any other market, you've almost certainly heard of Bitcoin. The original cryptocurrency has taken the world by storm in the last decade, presenting over 600,000% gains in the last 10 years since 2011. That means if you put $1,000 into Bitcoin back then, you would have more than $6 million if you sold at the recent peak. But not everyone gets to sell the top and buy the bottom. The recent market crash of crypto in May drew down the price of Bitcoin by over 55% and it has since recovered over half of those losses. This proves that the market for Bitcoin and cryptocurrencies at large is still extremely volatile, which is likely what attracts many people to the space. This video will cover the entire history of Bitcoin, from its inception by the mysterious Satoshi Nakamoto in 2009 to the over $1 trillion valuation it held earlier this year. This video is for educational purposes only and is not financial or investment advice. You are responsible for your own decisions. I do not own any Bitcoin as of making this video, but I do own some other cryptocurrencies and have owned Bitcoin in the past. But with that said, sit back, relax, and let's jump in. You're watching Interspatial. Be sure to drop a like and subscribe to the channel if you're enjoying the video so far. We begin our journey on the heels of the 2008 economic recession. Subprime mortgage contracts and irresponsible borrowing have brought consumer markets to their knees and not for the first time. Angry at the disregard for regular people and the greed of the banking industry, Satoshi Nakamoto, an anonymous figurehead with a background in programming, had a vision for a people's currency that could not be controlled, printed or manipulated by a centralised authority like governments. This is why you often hear Bitcoin described as decentralised. No one person or institution holds the power to change anything on the Bitcoin network. Any changes must be agreed upon by a majority of miners on the blockchain. This is called a consensus mechanism in the crypto world. Bitcoin wallets associated with Satoshi Nakamoto currently hold almost 1 million Bitcoins. No, not $1 million worth of Bitcoin, 1 million Bitcoins, which today is worth over $4.8 billion and over $6.4 billion at Bitcoin's peak in March this year. So just who is this Satoshi Nakamoto? Well, the answer to that is no one knows. Just like the currency he created, Satoshi's identity remains private even after all these years and based on the activity of his Bitcoin wallets, he has not sold any of his Bitcoin either. We can know this because anyone with a copy of Bitcoin's ledger, which is publicly available, can see the amount of Bitcoin in every wallet address that exists and any Bitcoin sent from or received at those addresses also. You might think that this goes against Bitcoin's promise of privacy, but the key point is that no one knows which wallet address belongs to who. They just know how much is in each wallet and the transaction history. Which reminds me to mention that Satoshi's Bitcoin holdings are speculative based on the very earliest active addresses for Bitcoin, as it is assumed that the first active addresses belong to him since he created the blockchain. Since we have no clue of Satoshi's true identity, it is also entirely possible that the name represents a group and not an individual. Also, an interesting fact, the smallest unit of exchange on the Bitcoin network is one millionth of a Bitcoin, and this unit is called a Satoshi. At the current valuation, one Satoshi is worth 0.045 cents, or one dollar equals roughly 2,200 Satoshis. At the time of Bitcoin's inception in 2009, each coin was effectively worthless. Since Bitcoin has no intrinsic value and you can't do anything with it, the price of Bitcoin is entirely speculative. This is not me saying Bitcoin has no use case. As I mentioned at the start, I've owned some in the past and I believe in its core philosophy. This is just me saying that it has no intrinsic value. Its value is determined by what other people believe its value to be. It's extrinsic. Very similar to regular fiat currencies, actually. Which leads me on to the main reason Bitcoin has speculative value, and that is that it is technically a deflationary asset. Fiat currency is a currency backed by nothing. The way currencies worked prior to 1973 was that the US dollar was backed by physical reserves of gold, and every other currency was backed by US dollars. So effectively, every currency was backed by gold. This meant that if the US government wanted to print more money, they needed to acquire more gold reserves, making it very hard to print excessive amounts of money into the economy. As we all know, the US government has been printing like crazy in the advent of C-19 with the stimulus packages and the like. This is because the US came off of the gold standard in 1973, well technically in 1933, but they came fully off of it in 1973. This is what we refer to as fiat currency. Since US dollars are now backed by nothing except the government's promise that they are valuable and can be printed as the government wishes, devaluing the currency at the same time. The more dollars exist, the more dollars you need to buy things, the less each dollar is worth. Well, as mentioned earlier, Bitcoin is decentralized. This means that no central authority can create more Bitcoins. The only Bitcoin that is being created and added to the circulation is as rewards for Bitcoin miners who use their computing power to solve complex math problems in order to validate transactions made on the blockchain. This can be verified because of the decentralized nature of the miners. 
No one miner can validate a block on their own. It requires consensus from a majority of miners. This ensures that no fraudulent transactions are put on the blockchain. Technically, if the majority of miners agree to it, you could put a fake transaction in, which is aptly called a 51% attack in the crypto world. Though this goes against the interests of the majority of miners, so this is unlikely to happen. So the only new bitcoins that enter circulation are rewards from these miners that use their computing power to secure the blockchain. These rewards are halved roughly every four years in an event colloquially known as the halving, which we'll get into in a bit. This, however, means that there is a physical limit on how many bitcoins can ever exist, and that limit is 21 million. We are currently at almost 19 million of them already in circulation, with just over 2 million left to be minted. This hard-coded limit on the number of bitcoins that can ever be created is what drives the price. Where fiat currencies can be printed as much as the government wishes, bitcoin has a hard-coded limit. This is also why many people refer to bitcoin as digital gold. Since gold has a similar limitation, there is only so much gold we can ever mine, there are only so many bitcoins that will ever be minted. Knowing that bitcoin's founder, Satoshi, holds around 1 million bitcoin, this could potentially cause a market crash if he liquidated his holdings all at once, since he holds roughly 1 19th of the entire supply of bitcoin. Keeping with the gold comparison, this will be like someone dumping 9.2 million kilograms of gold on the market at once. Though Satoshi's wallet addresses have not been active in over a decade, so these fears could be argued to be nothing to worry about, but it's always there. The last Bitcoin is estimated to be minted in the year 2140. Until then, Bitcoin is technically inflationary, meaning more is being created every day. Though of course it is far less inflationary than fiat currencies or even gold. But with 19 million already created and 2 million left to create, if it's only been 12 years since the first Bitcoin was mined, how can it take another 119 years to finish mining Bitcoins? A very valid question. The answer is the halving. Yeah, I told you we'd come back to this. Roughly every four years, the reward for each block on the blockchain is halved. The initial reward back in 2009 was 50 bitcoins per block mined. In 2012, the first halving took place and the reward was halved to 25 bitcoins. Since the halving takes roughly every four years, the next halving was in 2016, which took the reward down to 12.5 bitcoins per block. And the most recent halving in 2020 reduced the reward again to 6.25 bitcoins, which is the current rate. At some time in 2024, we will see the fourth halving occur, which will take the reward down to 3.125 Bitcoin. With the reward halving every four years, this means the inflation rate of Bitcoin is also halving every four years, which is why it will take so long to mine the final Bitcoin. In the year 2076, the reward will be a measly 0.00038 Bitcoins. Though I imagine, barring something catastrophic, the valuation of Bitcoin by then will be astronomically higher than it is today due to the intense scarcity. This is precisely why I said Bitcoin could be a deflationary asset earlier in the video. Once all Bitcoin is mined and no new ones are minted, ever, you have no inflation. Since any Bitcoin that is lost cannot be retrieved, this results in what is technically a deflationary asset, since inevitably there will be some Bitcoin lost on old hard drives or through someone losing the private key to their wallet, etc. In fact, this has already happened many times, especially earlier in Bitcoin's life when it was less valuable and people cared less about their Bitcoin. There are countless stories of people throwing out old hard drives that had thousands of Bitcoin on them worth maybe a few dollars at the time, which today would be worth millions or even billions of dollars. The current estimate for lost Bitcoin is roughly 3.7 million Bitcoins or 17.6% of the entire total supply equivalent to over $166 billion at today's prices. Naturally, as it becomes more valuable, people are more careful with their Bitcoin, and so I doubt we will keep losing Bitcoins at this rate into the future, but there are inevitably some that will be lost, which will make the asset deflationary once all remaining Bitcoins are mined in 2140, and arguably before then if the rate that we lose Bitcoins exceeds the rate that new ones are minted. I spent so long explaining the halving because it is essential to understand why Bitcoin has value and why the price moves as it does. There are many models for the price of Bitcoin such as the stock to flow model, the 6 year cycle, super cycles, lengthen cycles, but the most popular model by far is the 4 year cycle. The halving is every 4 years which drives the 4 year cycle of Bitcoin. This results in a market cycle that looks something like this, with a prolonged drawdown in prices, then the halving happens, sending a supply shock into the market as only half as much new Bitcoin is available now, which reverses the price direction and sends Bitcoin into a parabolic run, followed by another prolonged drawdown in price going into the next halving, and then this repeats. It's very likely that you initially heard about Bitcoin during one of these parabolic run-ups, be that in 2013, 2017 or 2021. Since Bitcoin gets by far the most media attention during these bull runs and that's when all of your friends are telling you to buy it, when prices are low there's very little fanfare around the asset. Again, I'll stress that this is not the only theory for why Bitcoin's price chart looks the way it does, but it is by far the most popular theory. 
If this model is to be believed, we should see one final run up by Bitcoin towards the end of this year or early next year, followed by a prolonged drawdown in prices of a year or a year and a half going into the 2024 halving, which will lead us into another bull run in 2025 or 2026. No model is ever entirely correct though, and it is likely that Bitcoin will deviate from this model eventually, as the halving has less and less impact on the supply of BTC. The first halving took the supply from 50 Bitcoin per block to 25. The next halving in 2024 will take it from 6.25 to 3.125. This is obviously a smaller decrease, and so in theory we should eventually see the model deviate and react less to the halving, and possibly have a more stable price action in the future, similar to that of gold. We know as a fact that the returns and volatility of Bitcoin have been decreasing over time. The 2013 bull run put in gains of over 8,000%, while the 2017 bull run was closer to 2,000%, and the current 2021 bull run has put in just over 600%. Though of course, it's definitely possible that this run isn't over yet, given the recent price action to the upside. This diminished volatility and returns indicates that eventually, Bitcoin will become a lot more stable than it is today, and can take its crown as the ultimate store of value. Since the technology behind it is perfect for that role, just that the volatility right now is too high to really call it that. If your store of value can lose 55% in two weeks, it's not really a great store of value. Someday though, I believe it can be. Which brings me to the end of today's video on Bitcoin. If you enjoyed this one, then be sure to subscribe to the channel to catch all my upcoming videos, and enjoy the rest of your day.